Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Wednesday's end of days trading, the 5th of April 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of the market numbers for European clothes, let's just go through them. European markets, you have the FTSE up 10 points in the end, certainly coming off the uh, of the uh, earlier weakness on the back of stronger inflation numbers. The German DAX down 64 points on the back of weaker auto sales. The French CAC down 10 points as well, even though Le Pen certainly fared a worse in the uh, presidential uh, TV debate. FTSE, MIB, IBEX, etc. certainly weaker. Uh, again, uh, the summation really was uh, the uh, European PMIs overall net net negative on the weaker side. Okay, uh, again, we had uh, Mr. Weedman's uh, hawkish comments regards QE and uh, tapering and obviously interest rates rising in the, fu in the foreseeable future. Again, all risk negative. Now, US markets certainly have taken center stage. We had a, uh, a short squeeze in the back of stronger ADP numbers, employment numbers certainly coming in stronger than expected, even though mortgage applications dropped. Uh, after that, subsequently, we had market services PMI. Uh, ISM all certainly on the negative side, therefore negating the a stronger ADP number. Also, we had crude stocks certainly coming in uh, stronger than expected, therefore supply concerns uh, obviously arose again, and you actually got a sell-off in the price of oil. Now, uh, FOMC minutes in the next uh, seven minutes or so, so it'll be interesting to see how the markets react then. Market certainly seems to be um, uh, trading sideways at present. Okay, now uh, we have had other um, complications in terms of the market rally. Uh, we have a we have concerns with regards to one North Korea overnight, although that didn't stop the uh, Shanghai index rallying 1.5%. So certainly a uh, risk off for geopolitical tensions via North Korea. Obviously, with uh, Mr. Z's visit now, obviously fast approaching. It'll be interesting to see how the markets react there. Also, we have concerns uh, with regards to Syria and the potential chemical attack there and the, um, the ramifications and the implications with regards to the king. I mean, we have King Jordan now, uh, Jordan's visit, just to just listen to the press conference there. And it certainly seems that Mr. Uh, Obama really is in, a, is in crosshairs. I mean, what is he going to do uh, in terms of uh, unilateral action in, in Syria? Uh, he can't go via the UN because it probably get vetoed by China and Russia. So it'll be interesting to see how he reacts any unilateral action is obviously interpreted as being risk of a risk off and is risk negative. So just bear that in mind as well. So it's important to understand that aspect uh, in terms of trading and uh, the reaction in the market. So uh, again, any type of geopolitical uncertainty is risk negative. Therefore, you are looking at the market certainly being under pressure. OK, and you are looking for risk aversion to obviously kick in. That's my interpretation as far. So geopolitical uncertainty via North Korea and the ramifications it has in China and obviously the Chinese visit as well in terms of trade concerns. It's all interwoven. Uh, obviously, again, with regards to the Syrian situation, does will Mr. Trump intervene? If he does, then how will the Syrians, sorry, the Russians react? And that has ramifications in Ukraine and across the broader spectrum as well. So everything is interlinked and interwoven. Also, given the fact that Mr. Bannon has been sacked as well. Uh, so again, what are the ramifications of that? Will there be political infighting? Will that help the cause in terms of trade? Uh, the healthcare bill and obviously the uh, the uh, tax reform going forward as well. Will he lose political clout further? Obviously, any disagreement, he'll lose support within his own party and internal factions and any signs of internal factions is obviously risk negative because it means that Mr. Trump can't obviously uh, fulfil his promises. So all these uh, aspects in, from a fundamental uh, view have are very, very net-net bearish from my understanding, and you are looking at risk aversion, especially given the fact that Mr. Trump has been criticising Germany. That's why you actually seen the uh, German DAX down today as well uh, due to um, the uncertainty going forward in terms of German exports, given number one, US auto sales are on the decline sharply as well. OK, and not only that, you have uh, Mr. Trump doing a, a trade review of all the uh, nations that he has a trade deficit against. So i.e. Germany's uh, the, the chief culprit and obviously him blaming the euro uh, weakness and euro debauchery in Germany, which in essence is, is a ECB phenomenon as opposed to Germany dictating its currency in which way it moves. So again, that's interesting to see. OK, hence the reason why. 
Uh, Mr. Weedman is, is, is sounding very hawkish now and attempting to get the euro higher as well. OK, and generally speaking, you've had um, inflation numbers certainly perking higher as well. After, Even though after today's economic data was more or less in line stroke negative price, that it was all strong and, and certainly reinforcing the argument that, that the ECB needs to taper. And if we taper, less QE, less QE means equity markets go lower. OK, right. Uh, let's look at the actual technical markets or uh, technical perspective now. Let's look at the German DAX again. I said, uh, provided we hold double top, bias remains bearish. And I'll, and I'll stick to that and I'll adhere, adhere to it. Although having said that, with the Nasdaq breakout today, it certainly does come bring that uh, theory or that argument into question. OK, uh, again, it will, does bring that into question, given the fact that the Nasdaq on the daily chart, as I've already stated, that the Nasdaq and the DAX are interwoven. And with the Nasdaq breaking higher, it certainly does bring the uh, the actual argument that the DAX will hold double top, etc. So it'll be interesting to see how we close today. Can we actually close above that key 5430 for 440? Sorry, post FOMC minutes, will we see a sell off on geopolitical concerns, etc. etc. It'll be very, very interesting to see how we close today. Okay, if we um, if we hold the pivot high, the pivot high is uh, 5453. We're currently trading around the 5470 zone, so it's only a 15 20 point uh, return or pullback, and we're back below that key resistance zone. So let's see how we trade. Okay, let's, let's uh, or alternatively, we could have a, a broadening, expanding wedge type pattern here as well. So let's see how the market unfolds, and, I, and I'll certainly make my decision once we close. But given the fact that the Nasdaq has broken higher, it needs to be respected, okay, on the back of stronger ADP. Right, okay, in terms of the German DAX again, uh, I apologize for making these videos very long, folks, but I must uh, uh, discuss what's on my mind, my thought process, okay, so bear flag on the daily chart. Uh, obviously, German DAX certainly under pressure. The real next support really is a gap fill at 12,150. Now, given the geopolitical tensions and the uncertainty surrounding that, etc., ECB weaving and certainly sounding hawkish, so on and so forth, one would expect, and I do expect, the German DAX to close that gap below at 12,150. So, look for weakness on the uh, US uh, markets. As you can see here towards the close, you can see the German DAX flush quite powerfully. Uh, you can see we hit a bit of a high of 12 to 90 and then all all of a sudden we're down uh, 60 70 80 pips so it's interesting okay very very interesting you can certainly see that resistance is holding we have a lower high no higher highs and higher lows it's, it's definitely a lower high and that is risk negative from my understanding especially when the we the weekly chart is holding resistance okay looking at the french cac now french cac as well going towards the close you certainly had a sell off on the back of steve bannon news Okay, being uh, demoted or sacked. So again, risk negative. 60 minute chart at the moment, you have a HS formation on the French CAC, given the fact that the DAX is holding resistance. So you are looking for a lower high here. Bear in mind uh, the political uncertainty regarding the election as we get closer and closer certainly rises. And as you can see, the French, the French CAC has been rising ever since. And it's totally oblivious to any type of risk. Uh, risk at all so again that certainly needs to be factored in as well so hns formation on the french cap looking to move lower 10 minute chart on the FTSE 100 we certainly flushed late on the back of obviously oil data oil inventory is certainly increasing and therefore uh, the uh, the oil rally is certainly unraveling very quickly okay uh, for now we have uh, potential support here diagonal trend line we've broken down broken down below that uh, the pivot high certainly is 7360 for now. Uh, Mr. BOE Villeg, uh, or if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, apologize, folks, if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. Mr. Villeg basically is, um, his interpretation is, um, is, is certainly of one of, of being dovish. Now, he certainly tried to uh, spin the inflation numbers this morning, given the fact that we had uh, economic data coming out stronger, but inflation certainly spiking, and that's what caused the weakness in the FTSE 100. We touched a pivot low of 73.25. That's when I covered my shorts. And then we subsequently rallied to 73.60 in the back of oil inventory data on Mr. BOE Villa, certainly sounding more dovish than uh, expected. So looking uh, the market flushed. And then uh, towards the end, obviously, we certainly foreclosed... Uh, weaker uh, going into the market close okay so that's that's going to be interesting to see how the market reacts there okay in terms of the um let's cl uh, clarify okay in terms of the next index let's just quickly bring up the euro stocks folks okay last but not least euro stocks again flushing lower high as you can see on 10 minute chart you have support now at 3465 
The question is what will happen after that, given the H&S formation. So the H&S formation top is 3510. Your neckline is uh, 3465, looking to flush low. Okay, so looking for risk aversion here. So watch out for risk aversion and look for a flush low. On that note, I think I'm going to uh, call, it, uh, call it a day in terms of market wrap. It certainly is longer than expected at nine minutes. So trade signal, signal the market updates from leading providers. Be sure to visit. Goodbye.